Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Retro Gamers Podcast, episode one one sixty seven. There, there's, a, there's a mage battle happening over there in Los Angeles. Larry here and Anthony here battling and the what, dragon. Look, that's me. All, that's you or you the dragon trying to take over the world. Well, I didn't want to point that part out, but you know, <laughs> no, here I am. Oh, there you are. What was that? Uh, that was a that was a magnet from the casino I was at in Vegas. <laughs> oh, the Exca- uh, Excalibur. Excalibur. Mm-hmm. Ah, yes, the first the first hotel that I've stayed in. Actually, yeah. no, we stayed in when we went to Vegas. The first that was time. my first trip to Las Vegas. Also, yes. yeah, you go the Excalibur. That was where uh, that was where I discovered the wonder that is Krispy Kreme donuts. <laughs> oh, that's right. We did find a Krispy Kreme there. <laughs> it's st- and you know what? It's still there in the same spot in the hotel. <laughs> hey, listen, when a good thing's happening, don't move yeah. it. I also remember eating six of them in one sitting and getting sick. I don't remember that part. Mm-hmm. I may not have been there. No, you I, were definitely there. I was <laughs> I was gambling. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I remember that. Terribly gambling. Yes. So we are back. And um, first and foremost, uh, just to bring it out of the realm of things here, and congratulations on your championship victory. Thank you very much. It was a hard-fought battle, and uh, you know, very happy that my team won. Uh, yes, I was in an ice hockey tournament in Las Vegas over the weekend. So uh, I meant your highlight group. Oh, the highlight group. Yeah, that one was good too. But I, I gotta give, I gotta give the edge to the uh, the ice hockey tournament. Fair enough, no problem. <laughs> so yeah, highlight. That, that that was a that was definitely a highlight for the weekend. My gambling yeah. this weekend, definitely not a highlight. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, came in on the uh, the the red end of it. Uh, yeah, I don't know how deep the red could be, but it was pretty deep. <laughs> uh, trust me when I tell you, it can go very deep. Oh, yeah. I think I still owe money to Las Vegas. I'm not 100% sure. That wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> so, um, so we're here this week and uh, finally kind of getting back into the norm here. Uh, we had the new year. We had CES last week we're talking about. So we're going to try to settle our woes and uh, get back into what brought us to the dance and that's talking about these retro video games most of which that are behind me uh some styles are behind anthony there yep. and um and i figure let's get right into it because we got some good stuff to talk about today all right sounds good to me so what do you want to talk about um dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 no, dun. stop. <laughs> so <laughs> that is not what we're talking about. <laughs> Another podcast. Totally different podcast, and definitely not one we're experts in. <laughs> no, <laughs> <That> is... <laughs> I don't know. He's only laughing because it's true. <laughs> exactly. I'm. Not, I'm just. I love it. That was. I like that. So. <laughs> What we're going to talk about today uh, actually is um, a topic uh, that I know you you enjoy as far as this genre of video gaming, and one that I've kind of rediscovered. Who is it? No. Why does it always happen? I'm going to disconnect that line, too, pretty soon. You should. Um, like the only human left with a landline. Just let it ring. It's, it's a magic jack. It's barely a landline. All right. Well, let it ring. Or we, should an, or we should just take a live call on air. Yeah, we're, we're ready. Well, I'm going to go get it. No, I'm kidding. Move on. No, okay. It's a telemarketer. I know that's exactly what it is. In any event, that's why I have the number, actually. Mm. So, worth 40 bucks a year. So, um, a topic, again, Ant, that you're going to enjoy, that one of which that I recently uh kind of rediscovered. Uh, mm-hmm. Long long story short, I'm not going to get into it. Uh, it just, yeah. Things lately, just uh, I've had a lot of stress. Okay. Um, that's about it. Oh, uh, wait, you know that you're stressed. I have, I, the an- I have the answer Uh-oh. for stress. Well, what do you got? The, the man, the myth, the legend, who always <laughs> is the answer to stress. <laughs> Bob Ross. What is that? Sticky somebody notes. Somebody gave it. Somebody gave it to me for Christmas. They're Bob Ross sticky notes. Oh, that is fantastic. Bob Ross post its. That's because the greatest. Basically, you can get anything with Bob Ross on it these days. That is the great. I, honestly, he, he, I mean, does his family even know that this is happening? Yeah, they've been they, they've been whoring him out for a while now. Oh, the, 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 the um, Bob Ross. Uh, um, it's a Bob uh, Ross board game. 
no, no, what I'm trying to say is like the the intellectual property of Bob yes. Ross. It's almost as big as like the Muppets or something. Although it's nuts. I saw a meme last week that I thought was very interesting, and it was um, what if all of Bob's Ross wait, what if all of Bob Ross's paintings were pointing you in the direction of where he hid his bodies? <laughs> <laughs> creepy right <laughs> the happy little tree right but, here but but, it's, <laughs> but, then it, but, but then it made me think because he would always say happy little tree right here let's give him a little friend i'm like ah, hmm. ah the friend Soil. the friend yeah the friend bur- buried underneath the tree <laughs> poor bob ross <laughs> anyway moving on <laughs> i think I what are we talking some... about <laughs> and we're talking about bob ross now i think i bought some of his painting supplies we need a bob ross video game Yes, we do. It'd be uh, just before, like uh, Mario Paint. Oh, God. Before we get to that, you were talking about you're being very stressed. Uh, you've oh, been yeah, stressed apparently my, <laughs> the stress and, level is starting to go up now. Apparently. <laughs> In any event, uh, I have kind of come to rediscover puzzle games, mm-hmm. which, <laughs> depending on the puzzle, might actually give me a little more stress. But I found some that can kind of ease my woes you know it's kind of like they say music soothes the savage beast uh for me it's been some puzzle games and what are your take and your your like thoughts and your love or what got you to love puzzles and puzzle games um well you know we're gonna have to we're gonna have to go really far back into the past i'd say let's go all the way back to first grade larry i was a wee ba- wee lad then around six years old seven um, you know, just, just enjoying my time, you know, not worrying about anything. Uh, um, great. Yes, I was, but uh, no, actually, uh, to be honest with you, right, I really, I, I got into puzzle. I actually did get into puzzles when I was, when I was like six or seven years old. Um, <laughs> I, I discovered, um, anagrams when I was in the first grade. Um, and I used to do, you know, those puzzle uh, anagrams and cryptograms were my yes. thing way back in the day. So and if you know, uh, um, anagrams are words that are all mixed up. Cryptograms are the ones where um, the, uh, the the paragraph is rewritten where letters are substituted for different letters. So like mm-hmm. the X in the word could, is actually an A and you had to figure out which letter stood for what. And this is when you were six? Yeah, this is when I was six. Nerd. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I've accepted my my nerd <laughs> status ever since. Um, and I, actually, I remember my first grade teacher talking to my mother about it, saying, "Oh, you know, <laughs> you know, your son, your son finishes the work in class really quickly, and then he starts doing these puzzles." And I'm like, "Yeah," I was like, "Because that's, you know, I got bored." Um, <laughs> you so, bore me, teacher. Yeah, basically. So that that's where that's where my love of puzzles started, mm-hmm. and obviously it never ended. Uh, video game wise, um, video game wise, it probably started with Tetris, which was probably uh, the game that started a lot of people with puzzles uh, mm-hmm. off of puzzles. Tetris is definitely the one I attribute it to, and ever since then, I mean, um, there's not there hasn't been a system that I've owned where I haven't bought some type of puzzle game. Okay. Uh, whether it's a puzzle game or an adventure game where you need to solve, you know, you need to solve different uh, riddles or puzzles or things like that in order mm-hmm. to move on. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, my, yeah. So my puzzle gaming experience goes back mm, over 30 years now. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Me personally, I don't, I mean, I was never really a big thinker. So, <laughs> you know, puzzle don't games. Say. So puzzle games never really came to me like that you know you're talking about you know your teacher talking to talking to you you know to your parents about you finishing work early and going off and you know not going off but just trailing off and 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 playing these puzzle games you know my parents got called up to school because i couldn't draw in the lines so (laughs) so two totally different backgrounds of education and how we started life Uh, i was Uh, just gonna say that kind of sums up our lives today larry that's an issue (laughs) i see yeah Great side story on that I, one. I was just gonna say, I think I think yeah, you're still trying to learn how to draw within the lines. Meanwhile, I just can't seem to stop solving puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> I remember vividly too was a penguin. In any yeah. event, um, I also so, can't seem to stop solving puzzles where I do that and get to the other side and find out, oh, you get nothing for it. <laughs> <laughs> Good day, sir. Good day. So, you know, with me with puzzles. Uh, and puzzle games, uh, I think maybe the first one I remember even playing like on it, like I wasn't 
in on Tetris that early. Yes, I had it on Game Boy, but it took because it was packed in. But it took me a little while to really appreciate Tetris Mm -hmm. uh, on any system. I definitely never had it on NES, uh, either version, the Tengen version, Tengen version, or the Nintendo (laughs) one. Um, But I do remember, like, I like I got. I think the first puzzle game I probably had was Anticipation. Oh yes, that was a great game. Uh, fantastic game you look back on it absolutely phenomenal and what is the fun fact about anticipation uh it it is a four-player game no uh anticipation is the only game where the nintendo seal of approval is on the back is on the back instead of the front yes yep so um so anticipation was and for those who are, aren't familiar with anticipation basically it's kind of like pictionary uh where the the game starts drawing a picture and you buzz in um and then you guess and you move out it's actually a combination of maybe trigger pursuit as far as the board is concerned mm-hmm. and pictionary so yes that's basically how you would do you mind yep. snow thank you uh very good you know very good level design as far as how the game's played and everything um and also i think anticipation was probably the first game we played where i realized oh this guy knows what he's doing because oh, nice. <laughs> you were solving puzzles before the damn pencil started moving <laughs> Well, I mean, it was kind of easy when you saw the uh, when you saw like the you know the the blanks on the bottom, so you can fill. It. <laughs> I was always really good, like like Wheel of Fortune is my. Oh, is forget my, it. Yeah, like I don't even need. Yeah. I, a lot of times I don't need letters. It's great. Um, no, I've seen you do that. Yes, trust me, that's why I was so. saying, forget it. Why yeah, so you never this, tried out for Wheel? Uh, we, you know, wheels, one of those things where it's like, um, when you go to try out, they put, I think they really, they put a bunch of names in a big giant thing and they randomly select people. Oh. So it's not like, it's not like I can get on there just based on talent, so to speak. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> I was just talking but to someone the, about your game, game show history. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, you know, I am a game show addict and, uh, I'm hoping this year, fingers crossed, I'll get on another one. Ooh, we will see. Yes. Uh, but anyway. So, yeah, so Anticipation, you know, probably really one of the first ones uh, that I got into. But what was some, I mean, I, obviously we all know you're a huge Tetris fan. I mean, who really isn't? But you adore the game. You've told yes. stories of you and your family playing Tetris, which is phenomenal. But what are some of the other puzzle games that you that you remember playing? Um, you, know, any, you know, anywhere between, you know, like the NES and even up to today, kind of, because because you can't really modernize too many of these puzzle games. It's just a different take on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, true. And, uh, Oh, look at that. You go back over there. All right. Um, well, I mean, you know, you, you pull, you pulled out two really great ones, which were anticipation and, um, and Tetris. And, and, um, we've talked about those ad nauseum. And I can also start talking about like game show games that I used to play all the time because those were, you know, a lot of those are puzzle related as well. True. Win, Loser draw for NES. I used to always yep. enjoy playing. Um, uh, classic concentration on NES yes. was awesome. Yes. Um, and then, um, and then when you get to other systems, it's interesting because when I try to think about, when I try to go back and think in my head of all the other puzzle games, there's a there's a lack of puzzle game memory when I get to Genesis and Super Nintendo because I do, I don't really remember that many puzzle games that piqued my interest. Uh, on mm-hmm. those two systems when we went 16-bit. It was a lot, for me, it was a lot of um, Mario, Zelda Link to the Past, Sonic, um, the, the Disney games that were coming out mm-hmm. at the time, like Aladdin, like, like all of those were really grabbing me. And then also yeah. RPGs started to hit me, like Shining Force and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So puzzle games in the 16-bit era kind of took a backseat for a little while. I can see that. Um, Genesis had its fair share. Really, it was kind of like Columns, uh, mm-hmm. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, stuff like yeah. that. Dr. Mario. Uh, Dr. Mario. Well, that was more NES, but um, they had a good version. They had a good, uh, if you can find it in a in a uh, in a classic game store, uh, they had a two pack. It was Tetris and Dr. Mario. Oh yeah, I remember that. That's a good one. That's a good yeah. double. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, actually to your point, Dr. Mario, uh, probably the other or the biggest puzzle game, at least in my house. Um, it was the only one of two games my dad basically had like that was his mm. uh it was that and 
Desert Strike for obvious reasons. Uh And um, actually, it's probably why he went and would play Dr. Mario then uh, (laughs) to calm down from Desert Strike. Um, But uh, Dr. Mario definitely was was big time. And and Nintendo hit on that. Um, As far as I know, Dr. Mario wasn't like that was a homegrown game. It wasn't like a modded, modded, quote unquote, game like Pokemon Puzzle League was on the N64, which was just essentially Tetris 2. So um, actually, you know, it just dawned on me. Let me let me ask you that before we move on uh, with other puzzle stuff. So a lot of times to get around, you know, like I said, you don't get these puzzle games don't evolve. They just kind of modernize kind of sort of and if you look at tetris 2 which basically became like was it mickey's like magical drop or something yeah something like that uh pokemon puzzle league uh and probably some other versions that i i'm not thinking of right now uh did you would you have ever re-bought that type of game just because they kind of threw a new new coat of paint on it yeah, I mean, depending on the theming and stuff like that, like, um, to your point, like Tetris 2, Pokemon, like, I own, po- I still own Pokemon Puzzle League mm-hmm. for my N64 because it was just enjoyable, and the and the, poke- and the Pokemon, you know, skinning it with Pokemon just really worked well. That's all it really was, yeah. Yeah. Just a skin. I mean, and then, and then you wound up getting games like Bejeweled, which did the same thing, and um, actually, Larry, there's a, um, there's a version of that I have on my phone that's uh, WWE themed. Oh, like Bejeweled? Yeah, it's like a championship. Uh, it's WWE here. Let me uh, let me look right now. Uh, oh, right. It's right here on my phone. Uh, WWE Champions, I think it's called. Okay, yep, that's the one. Yeah, yeah and I, and, it, and, it, and it and it plays. Oh, yeah. all right. All right, well there it is. So um, <laughs> so yeah so. And that's kind of one of those ones too, where it's like you switch the you switch two of the items and you get three in a row and they disappear and stuff like that. Except that you know the theme. so that that type of game has been going on for you know for a really long time. Um, and I have no problem picking up rethemed ones if the themes pique my interest. So um, yeah, I think that's yeah that that basically uh, is their way of of going about um, you know bringing some of these games back uh, because again you know playing Tetris. Two on I think it was yeah it was on the NES and then its version which is the Mickey one on Super Nintendo uh, and then you get to the N64 it's the exact same gameplay yep. uh, basically so it's, that's yeah. pretty cool now when you play puzzle games do you play how can I like do you play just for the enjoyment do you play to try and zen yourself out you know what I mean like you know just play just to get a high score uh it depends uh, again it's one of those things where it depends on the mood that you're in i am um i my brain is naturally inclined to puzzle solve it's what you know it's um it's just it's just the way that i think i you know i have like a I, it's just a logical side to my brain that's always functioning so i'm always looking at problem solving and puzzle solving and you know it, to the point where I, I do it for a living um <laughs> you know it's part of my job so um on, on some days it's just a complete like hey you know what i want to do this i want to get the high score i want to win and on other days it's like i really just need to step back relax a little bit and chill out and then i'll pull up a puzzle game that's just going to relax and again um there are so many different types of puzzle games like we're talking about we're talking about kind of more of the traditional ones i think right mm-hmm. now where it's like here's yeah. your board here's the puzzle solve it um, but there are so many other ways. Uh, There's so many other types of puzzle games that you can you can um, you can discuss, and you can even talk about um, puzzle elements that exist in other types of games. For example, um, Resident Evil. Resident Evil is a survival horror game, but in order to get through Resident Evil, there are puzzles you have to solve within the game. Very so, true. Yeah. So uh, puzzle puzzles are a key component in a lot of video games, not just straight up puzzle games. And uh, like one of your favorites, Mist, uh, which is yep. just all about puzzle. Like I didn't realize that was really more puzzle. Like watching you play the um, was it the Thirteenth Doll? The Thirteenth Doll. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with those puzzles. And here I am watching you live. You can't hear me, but like I'm yelling at the television. You know, do you know, do this, do that. You know, change. I'm sure a bunch of us were. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um. And you know, it, you don't realize how or I forgot how you can make kind of like a, 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 a this story unravel just based on on puzzles 
Yeah. And that's um, and that is uh, kind of part of um, that was what, what I was going to say. Also, like outside of the puzzle genre, there's this other genre called it. it I think it's just called ac- uh, not action adventure, just adventure games. Mm-hmm. And that's where like uh, 13th Doll, 7th Guest, Mist kind of fall into because it's not straight up puzzle. It's more it's a little more open world where you're walking around, you're uncovering story as you're solving mm-hmm. these puzzles. Um, and once that genre hit me and that it was the seventh guest that was the first one to do it, I was mm-hmm. hooked completely on it, on those types of games for a really, really long time. Seventh guest, 11, uh, 11th hour, Mist, Riven, all mm-hmm. of those. And then even like, um, uh, there was another game called scratches that I had for the PC again, similar game. Mm-hmm. You know, you're in a house and you're trying to uncut, you're trying to unsolve this mystery, but the only way you do it is you, you're solving puzzles or, fi- or it's more like kind of finding things. It's like there's a key that you find in the kitchen that you have to bring to a different room that unlocks, but then you're stuck in, you can't get any further until you find something else. It's like that type of thing where you're, um, <laughs> where you just have to use logic um, to try and figure these things out. Uh, and there's actually, uh, and that goes all the way to puzzle games for today. Um, on the PlayStation VR, there is oh, yeah. there's a game called I Expect You to Die. And <laughs> and basic well, use you. Well no, that's what it's called. It's called oh. I Expect You to Die. And basically it's an escape the room game, which is another type of puzzle game. That's uh, a, yeah, it's a big um, puzzle. And that's what game. it is. And in each and each one you are physically because it's a VR, you're using your hands mm-hmm. to kind of figure out what to do. And if you do the wrong thing, you die. So <laughs> So just like yeah. in real life. Yeah, just like in real life. So yeah, so um so there there's some there's so many different ways to talk about this, but you know, and I'm going in a roundabout way and talking about all of it at once, but um but yeah, yeah. The, I mean what for you, for you, like if you were to pick like just off the top of your head, um the puzzle game the puzzle game that had the most impact on you, which one is it and why? I would have to say, and it's actually only recently, uh, but it started by playing the original version, the original Game Boy version, which I never owned. I downloaded it on the virtual console on a 3DS, but would be Mario's Pacross. Mm. And it now there are so many versions of Pacross. And real quick, uh-huh. just to explain, and it's it's kind of expanded into more, but the but the basic idea of Pacross is you have a board, five by five, ten by ten, fifteen by twenty, however it is, and there's numbers along the top. It almost it almost seems like Sudoku as far as when you first look at it, real quick. Numbers on the top, numbers on the side, and what those numbers represent is the number of blocks to fill in in that column in that line, and when there's more than one number, that means there's going to be at least a gap in between. So if you have a row of five spots and it, it can only be like a three and a one because you need that fourth one to to, mm-hmm. to, to, to put the space in between. And I remember downloading it on the the, the 3DS on the virtual console and because I've always heard, seen gameplay about it, always looked interesting, and I just wanted a puzzle game. It was like mm-hmm. five bucks, and by God, I fell in love with it like like that. Um, to the point where I've downloaded, I think it's about six or seven per cross series, not necessarily from Nintendo, but I guess some company who who got the idea from Nintendo or vice versa. So I got like six or seven of them on the 3DS. I got about. Mm, two or three of them on the switch mm-hmm. to the point that even in, I believe you on one of your trips back yeah, from, uh, from Japan. And I <clears throat> never even knew even learning about, you know, uh, Japanese games, Famicom games that there was one on the S- super Famicom. Let me yeah. make sure I get this in frame here. Yeah. Um, across. I forgot what this is called in English. But I, thought it was basic- just, I thought it was just Mario per, co- uh, per cross. I mean, it probably is what it translates into, but it's got something. Um, there's another name to it. Uh, here, kind of give you an idea. Here's a screenshot. Yep. Give you an idea what it looks like. Um, I actually hidden very deep in out in the Retro Gamers YouTube page. 
I don't think it's on my page. I think it's on the Retro Gamers page. Okay. These two videos of me playing this, streaming it. So if you want, go and find it. Uh, please do, because we only have like five views on each one. But, <laughs> there, but There's um, a reason for that. You're live streaming a game of Procross. This is, yeah, but still, I thought people would get into it. Um, but check it out. And and that right now, Ant, is, is what really I've been playing. And there's, um, on 3DS, I downloaded a, um, I think it was a Zelda version of Procross. Oh, cool. Like a, like a Twilight Princess type thing to it. Mm-hmm. And um, it really, you know, days I come home and just the grind just grinding away on me, literally, I'll come home. This is what I meant much earlier when I said kind of just relaxing from it. I'll just sit down on the couch. I'll boot it up on the switch and just just play and just enjoy it. Um, even to the point that sometimes I may play with some soothing music because you can always change the background mm-hmm. noise uh a lot of times i'll play with no music i just kind of like that i don't know just kind of the natural around me yeah um though i think the new one if i remember correctly the new Pacross on the switch has like um like an ambient noise type background okay yeah which i which i actually quite enjoy so i've been playing that as well so that is what i've been just gearing up for and and that's my love right now is Procross as a as a puzzle game um anything on your end i mean a 13th doll i know was was definitely uh eating up your time in a good way uh anything yeah. else recently for you yeah 13th doll was definitely eating up my time and uh and to be honest with you i took a break from it because uh i want to make it last since it took 15 years to come out i want it to last a little bit <laughs> so um, it'll take you 15 years to beat yeah i don't want to beat it in 15 minutes so um so i i have taken a break from that for a little bit um but mm-hmm. i am enjoying it i have to say the um the game that impacted, uh, or at least my game of the year from last year that's puzzle related has to be The Witness. Um, and if you have not I played the... Talk about this. Yeah, let me tell you something. Um, there was just something about that game uh, that was so peaceful and at the same okay. time very challenging. Because you're just on an island. And and, and also, for, for me, uh, what was surprising about it is I don't like first person perspective. No, you don't. And that's exactly what this game was. What system was it on? Uh, well, I got it on the PlayStation 4. Okay. All right. So basically you're walking around an island and you're just coming oh, really? across puzzles. And there are no instructions on how to do the puzzles. Basically, the puzzles teach you how to do the puzzles. Okay. It kind of reminds me of a game show in England from back in the day. Just kind of jump in a room and figure out how to play. Well, whatever. and that's what it is. It's, it's it's just intuitive. So in other words, and, you know, obviously there are different types of puzzles all across the island. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, you have to learn all these different puzzles or figure out how to solve them all. And they start very, very simple. When you find the first one, it's like pretty easy. It's like, oh, I do this. But then, you know, they get subsequently harder in order to complete an area. And as you're going through, you're um, you're unlocking like different. Um, they have um, people reading different quotes or excerpts from well-known philosophers okay. and writers and theorists and stuff like that. But all the while, you're just kind of wandering around on this really beautiful island, you know, stumbling across these puzzles. And the only and, and again. The goal of it is just to solve the puzzles. It's not like it unlocks this whole big adventure or anything like that. (laughs) You're just completing the puzzles. And obviously you need to complete – some of them you have to complete to uh, access other things and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So um, it was just – you know, it was just an absolutely beautiful game. Um, I I believe I unlocked all three endings that I know of in the game. There you go. uh, Which is really cool. And, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I w- and to be honest with you, I would start a new game and play it again because it's not like you can remember how to solve them all. You remember how to do them, mm-hmm. possibly, but solving them all takes a lot of work. Um, yeah, that was always my concern. Like, you play these games, and at what point does it get too repetitive that you're pr- kind of like a game show game yeah. or, or a trivia game? You know, eventually they're going to repeat. Yeah, and that's the thing with this. I mean, I'm sure if I went back to it, I mm. would be able to solve a lot of the puzzles a lot quicker. 
But even still, you can't remember all of the pu- – there are, I think, over 600 puzzles on the island. Oh, wow. Yeah, six or 700 puzzles. Um, so getting through all of them is like, you know, it's a tall order. Yeah, forget that. But I do, I do highly recommend it. Just even if anything, like you said, like you come home from a long day and you want to do something peaceful, but mm-hmm. still have your brain engaged. <laughs> yeah. This is the, no, but this is the perfect thing for this was for me the perfect the perfect game because walking around the island you hear just the ambient noises of what it would feel like to be on an island. You know, you hear you hear the water a little bit, or if you're mm-hmm. if you're taking a boat around the island, obviously you're listening to the boat go with the water, uh, yeah. the tree, you know, the sound of the trees and the breeze. Um, just your footsteps walking around the different terrain. Okay. You know, is it VR? Uh, no, it is not VR. Okay. I'm trying to see but, if I have anything else as far as as far as puzzle. Um, I don't think so. At least not right now. Uh, nothing that I can tell. Oh, uh, you know what? It's fine. I, it, literally, my eye just went right to it, and I, I didn't I didn't think of it as a puzzle game, and then it reminded me of a game like the first game I really played on the. Mm-hmm. On the computer, uh, I saw Krusty's Funhouse on oh, Nintendo. Yeah. Um, a version which, of Lemmings. And that's exactly what it brought me back to. Uh, Lemmings was definitely the first PC game I really played. I think it came on about 147 floppy disks oh, yeah. uh, to play. <laughs> it was definitely a couple. And, you know, the idea of Lemmings, just like Krusty's Funhouse and Krusty's Super Funhouse, which I think I also have. I don't know why I have the NES version. Mm. Um uh, just basically you have these lemmings that just keep moving. They walk in a straight line and they don't stop. They'll bounce off a wall, they'll fall off a cliff, and you have to find a way to get them to a certain area. Um, so, you know, the different take in puzzles. Do you find yourself, like when you're really into these puzzle games, like can you jump from one genre to the other? Like a Tetris to a my second now at this point second favorite genre puzzle game being uh puzzle bobble or bust bust a move as we know it here Mm -hmm. uh yeah no i don't think there's a problem with switching puzzle games at all i mean like for me the witness like sometimes i needed to take a break Mm -hmm. because you know i would get stuck on puzzles and i'm like okay And, and that happens a lot too sometimes you um you get so into a game you you start overthinking it and then you're looking past what you need to do (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Um, and to, and taking that break helps. Um, so, mm-hmm. yeah, I've never had a problem switching from like, te- yeah, from like a Tetris to a, a Pokemon Puzzle League or or gotcha. Seventh Guest or something like that. That's no I have no problem doing that. Gotcha. So basically kind of to, to wrap this part of it up, you know, what would be then your absolute? Go- well, the answer is probably going to be Tetris. So besides Tetris, what would be your absolute go to? you know genre of puzzle because you know like like i said per cross there's tons of different versions of it yeah no i would probably i would probably lean more along the lines of like seventh guest and mist and stuff like that because what i love about those is that you're uncovering a story so it's not okay. just you're solving puzzles now you're solving puzzles and uncovering this whole story or myth or whatever um and it fills out the experience a little bit more Mm-hmm. Uh, and it also puts you in the, you know, puts it puts you in the game, so to speak, in that okay. respect. So um, again, totally different from like a Tetris. Tetris will be like the first and foremost, you know, that was the puzzle game that got me into puzzle video mm-hmm. games. Um, but Seventh Guest Mist and stuff like that, they took it to the next level and they gave me an experience along with the puzzle. All right. Very cool. And, you know, that's kind of what cell phones lead themselves to, or at least the original, you know, the first mm-hmm. wave of cell phones. Uh, you know, the Game Boy definitely had its fair share of puzzles because it was kind of the, the the type of game to play on a yep. Game Boy. Uh, so definitely, you know, they're out there. And what the, what's good is that you really can't, knock on wood, you can't screw up a puzzle game too much. Mm, uh, I mean, I look, it's either good or just terrible. But you really can't like, you know, oh, this is going to be fantastic. And you start playing it. Like, what, what is this? Like, you know what you're kind of getting yourself into. True. Very true. So, um, you know, as always, we want to hear from you folks out there. You know, what are your favorite genre of puzzles? Uh, what's your favorite puzzle game or, or series? Uh, hit us up on the Facebook, on the Instagram, on the Twitter. And, um, you know, let us know. You know, so we want you know this feedback. We want to we want to give back the mm-hmm. feedback because we want to hear from you guys, you gals, and uh, you know, let us know what what zens you out. So, 
but yeah, no, good stuff on the puzzles and uh you know, definitely I got a couple other Picross. Actually, there is a Picross game on the Switch that is kind of like has like this medieval storytelling to it. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, I just downloaded the demo. It's weird. The demo is only available mm-hmm. on the Japanese eShop. So I really didn't know what it was saying, dialogue. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's Picross, so you kind of play in any language. Yeah. That's another good thing about puzzles. Jumps the language barrier. Says, it, you know it, what? It really does. Blowing it to the side. Yeah. Done. Yeah, it really does. And actually, you know, just last night I was talking to a friend of mine and I did a search for like the best puzzle games on the from 2019 because I wanted I wanted a new one. OK, so. cool. Hey, side note, mm-hmm. um, a little off topic, but I want to get your idea. And while we're doing it here, um, did you download um, uh, uh, what the hell is that board game they have on the switch? It begins with a C. Clue. Not Catan. No. Carter knows no uh, oh, Carcassonne yeah did you download that I did not download that because oh, for some odd okay. reason I do, like I've played Carcassonne and I just don't understand it fair enough all right no problem because um, pandemic so... is available and yes. pandemic um, is debate, awesome uh, but I loved playing the board game yeah uh, I'm just curious how it's going to translate to the switch I mean it's it's pretty straightforward it's got really yeah. no difference except I mean you don't lose any pieces no I mean I have pandemic on my phone oh do you yeah. <laughs> that and uh, take that and ticket to ride. Ticket to ride. I'm waiting for that to come back out. You know, yeah, on a yes. home console. Yes. Um, all right. Well, it, it is. Um, isn't it available on um, Xbox? It is actually. It's, it's backwards compatible. The 360 yeah, so version you, is available. If on the you bought one. it on 360, yeah, you can play it on your Xbox. But I want it on the Switch. I want everything on the Switch. I like things on the Switch because when I travel, I can take it with me. <laughs> exactly. And uh, speaking of, well, maybe not the Switch too much, but um, going to switch gears here. Uh, we kind of open-ended here on this format this week. I want to mention this because it's on Kickstarter. I backed it. I'm looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. But just today, I rewatched. You know, they have like on Kickstarter, they have the video yeah. to introduce the campaign. And I'm watching it, and I'm like, ooh, that is a little odd. Nothing bad, just odd. I'll explain what I mean in a moment. So there's a game uh, available. It's already, it's been out. It came out years ago on the Super Nintendo called Jim Power and the Lost Dimension. Okay. Fantastic game. It kind of has a Contra meets kind of Super Mario Brothers, I guess, and the idea of a side scroller. Um, and it's just a shoot 'em up like that, like Contra is. Fantastic game. I think it's kind of hard to find. I'm not 100% sure, like original copies. Mm -hmm. But Pico uh, Interactive, P-I-K-O, is doing a Kickstarter to bring back Jim Power and the Lost Dimension on five different systems. They're going to remake the Super NES version. Okay. Yeah, they're going to tweak it a little bit, make, make it a little better than it was originally. I think they're adding a hit system to it. Okay. They are making a previously unreleased but completed Genesis version. Ooh. These are all brand new that you'll be able to play on your current consoles. Okay. They are making from the ground up an NES version of the game. Okay. And the two that really struck my fancy, they're making an Amiga CD32 version. Okay. Sure. That's me why. And the one I was eyeing, because I need this system for my Polymega, a TurboGrafx CD version. Oh, okay, I'm in. Which is actually a previously PC Engine Japanese-only version of the game. Okay. So, coming over that they're going to do. Uh, great, again, uh, we actually I put the link up... The, well, by the time this drops and you listen to it, it'll already be on. Um, mm-hmm. So the link is up right now. As we record, which is Monday, January 20th, uh, 24 days to go on the Kickstarter. Their goal is $50,000. They're currently at 35328 So they're nice. getting there. Uh, 389 backers. And this thing, I mean, the graphics on each system for their respective version of the graphics looks phenomenal. And I think I'm not talking out of turn when I say that, um, like, the pricing on this, basically... Mm-hmm. Uh, well, as we speak, there's only 32 left for the uh, early bird edition. Like, we get, like, a really good price on it. Okay. So, after shipping, my pledge is $50, which is not bad. No, it's not bad at all. 
and I get to choose any one of those five systems. Sweet. Yeah. And they have other ones, like if you want two versions, so you can get all five, you know, stuff mm-hmm. like that. And then, of course, you have your regular edition, which is just basically the physical version. I'm just going to read this verbatim. Physical version of Jim Power. You may pick the platform. Game includes region-free cartridge or CD, colored box, colored instruction manual. The special edition would be um, with special edition art on the box, um, uh, 11 by 17 poster, an original original soundtrack of the game as well. Cool. Um, they are also the stretch goals. Where are we? So stretch goals, I'm just going to read through this real quick. Um, the first couple are, no, first three actually are comic books, you know, of the, of the series. So they're going to do original comic books. Um, there's one where they would make literally a Famicom and a super Famicom version of the games, like in full Japanese, they said, um, uh, digital versions on the switch and the PS4. Uh, and then if they go higher, physical versions on the Switch and the PS4. And at the 350000 they get $350,000, they will do a Neo Geo version. Ooh. Which is not part... Usually these stretch goals, like, they become part of... Depending on what tier you're in, the Neo Geo cart is not part of any tier. <laughs> but <laughs> depending, on what tier, depending on what tier you're in, you can get a discounted price. But those bad boys are expensive. Of course they are. Uh, and then uh, as they keep going up, uh, they would do either a 22-minute cartoon, a 40-minute cartoon, or like a 75-minute movie almost. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. This thing, and the graphics just look fan. Even on the NES, the graphics look fantastic. Um, they got the rights from the original creator of the game who passed away. The, the whole story is on there. In 2016, I guess they worked with the family, Pico Interactive, and got the full rights to the game. So that's why they're moving forward. Here's the issue I had. I talked to my buddy uh, today about it at work, and he kind of explained to me because I never played TurboGrafx CD. Um, never had a TurboGrafx CD. So I'm watching the video, and you can all watch this as well. And they go through the different versions, the Genesis, okay. the NES, Super Nintendo. Characters moving, all good to go. They get to the – trying to find something to use that as an example. They get to the TurboGrafx CD version, and the character – again, I just got to make sure I can see myself here – will, like, jump. And then when he's on a platform, he'll be like – instead of going, like, jump, jump, you know what I mean? Like an arc, mm-hmm. it literally goes, like – Dunk. Oh, like straight down. Like he walks off the platform and he just literally just Plunks falls down. in a straight line. And I was like, ooh, that kind of looked weird. Uh, but my buddy told me that was basically the topographic CD. Like that's what it did oh, wow. in the games. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Well, that might make you second guess the TurboGrafx CD version. It is, and it's annoying me because I really wanted it on TurboGrafx. Well, you know, there are other TurboGrafx CD games to get, Larry. You don't have to get this one. There are, but this one's 50 bucks. Mm. (laughs) Um, But if I would get it, I would get the Genesis, if I change my mind, because the Genesis version is almost like an original version of the game. Okay. Like, different from Super Nintendo. So, oh, and then one more thing to mention, just to talk about how they're really going to like showing dedication to these games. Uh, I'm going to get a little nerdy here on this one. Uh Oh, no, no. uh, High quality parts and material. They're going to use the carts. Pins will be gold and beveled to avoid death grip. You know, where you just can't get it out of the system. Um, Gold plated pins. The CDs will be pressed professionally. And in the case of the TurboGrafx CD. And if anyone's listening and knows a lot about, like, the, like why this is the case, the TurboGrafx CD, they will be pressed at the lowest, uh, excuse me, the slowest speed. Okay. Now, I get that, you know, when you make a CD at a slow speed, it kind of ensures nothing skips. Right. But I'm just kind of curious the full reason behind it, because they didn't say that about the Amiga 32, CD32. Oh. So. I don't know. But in any event, uh, very cool. Oh, and they also made... <laughs> Which I feel like this is like a shot over the bow for uh, the NES maker unintentionally. But they're like, the NES version of Jim Power in the Lost Dimension is not going to be made with like a third party game maker. It's being oh. coded from the ground up. 
Oh, uh, did, 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 did LJN make it? Oh, well. <laughs> possibly <laughs> so definitely go check it out though honestly it looks like a great game and i think it's even at 50 bucks if you're one of the few left to be able to get it at that really good price well worth it for any of these systems all right cool i'm yeah. i'm in i'm intrigued and then you know what even past the uh the early bird special it's going to be 50 bucks regularly for like just the plain old regular edition uh so, hold and, on. i think i'm under uh-oh. attack there you go coming in that's Jim Power from the Lost Dimension. My God, you brought up Desert Strike. I might be in trouble. <laughs> oh boy. Well, if they fly Wait, over the water, Butch, don't use gas. Is that you? <laughs> he wouldn't be flying it. He would just be firing from it. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> he probably would be in there too. Um. So yeah, go check it out. I think honestly, I think this is well worth the back. All right. Very in cool. My opinion. And another. Um. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's on Kickstarter, but they got this other thing. It's a basically like an N64 storage box. Hmm. It kind of when you, you put the N64 on top of it, so it kind of reminds you of the disk drive, the 64 DD. Okay. But apparently, what you can do is you can store uh, I don't know maybe six or seven games inside of it, like N64 games. Okay. Um, it's just kind of just meant to you know free up some room. That's all. Looks pretty cool. Pretty straightforward. We'll put some pictures on our on our page. Um, and news wise, really not much about like in major updated news. The one thing I kind of want to talk about real quick, uh, and it's modern. Don't get me wrong. Did you see the new patent that supposedly Nintendo put in for? Uh, no. For the for the a uh, stylus. Yes, um, I did hear about that actually. So basically, do you know what it's about? Like, did you? Uh, no, but I think uh, I think the uh, the rumor is that they're they're literally going to come out like kind of similar to what um, what you can do on an iPad Pro um, with the stylus. Basically, yeah. What happens is it, it well, at least as going to the photos, um, it's just basically putting a little, you know, like the stylus rubber tip mm-hmm. on top of a Joy-Con. Um, uh, what do you call it thing? Uh, what the hell do you call it? Uh, you know, the part that you attach to Joy-Con and has the wrist strap on it. Yeah, I forgot what they call. It. I forgot what the name of it is, but in any event, um, so that thing. <laughs> uh, they just put in, you know, just a stylus on it, and apparently you can use it. Uh, it would be used in handheld mode, and and if you touch mm-hmm. something on the screen, it can cause the rumble and stuff like that. Very early, of course, it's rumor, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see that, like a stylus on the switch. Yeah, and then uh, something else came up in in my brain, news wise. Okay. Um. Oh yeah. Um. Modern news again. Okay. Sony announced last week officially. Uh, and this is, I think, the second or th- second year in a row. Uh, they will not far. be attend. They will not be attending oh. E3. Yeah, E3. Um, E3 is starting. Yeah, they're hurting. It's starting to dwindle. But, but I mean, it's not like E. It's not well. Sony and Nintendo. They're going to do their directs or state of play for Sony. Yes. So I guess it's just kind of a money saver at this point. Yeah. Well, I think what happened was when E3 closed themselves to general guests like uh yeah. you know when it became professionals only i think that's mm-hmm. when it started to take a little bit of a hit because uh, you know i mean part of the appeal of an e3 is that you have players there to get excited about what you're presenting mm-hmm. you know granted you know i'm not saying that you know people who work in the industry don't get excited over these things but i, I think there's a there's a, by cutting out the actual audience of the players who are going to be purchasing things i feel like you're mi- you're missing a, a bit of the heart and the excitement I get from it. um from your convention so or from your expo um and i think i think maybe and that's why i think we're getting stuff now like nintendo direct and sony state of play where they're presenting directly to you know us the players well, here's here's what's funny. You know, Nintendo started this whole thing. They yeah. started, you know, not showing up for well, maybe not not showing up, but they didn't do a press conference. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's when they started with the Nintendo Direct really. And and it was a hit because they were able to control it. It's not live, so it, they can do whatever they want with it. They can jazz it up. Was it last year that Sony did something like 
during E3, but not at E3, like when they were in that tent or something like that? Uh, I th- you may you be right. I don't, I don't remember exactly. But they only showed like four games. It was kind of weird. Yeah, it was something like that. In other yeah. words, it was. I think it was. Um, I think it was their way of still presenting something during E3 something, while people were yeah. paying attention. Yeah. And then you know Xbox shelling out the big bucks for their stage uh, presence. Mm-hmm. Um, but let me ask you this: so with Sony, all right, I get it. Especially like the last couple of years, it's all software. Yep. Uh, what are you gonna do? You know, just play games on on stage, or you just show it on a state of play, which is fine. Yeah. Not a problem. Uh, obviously still works for Xbox because they've been doing that, but they also get like Keanu Reeves to come out and he goes off script, but he's you know, Keanu Reeves. He's allowed to do that. This is true. This is very true. Bill and Ted three cannot wait. Um, but now with the PlayStation five and the Xbox series or elite, whatever the hell it's called. Um, do you think this is a, from your business point of view kind of in an entertain i know you hate when i say that but i'm but I between you and me you're there um like do you think it's a smart move for sony to skip out if they get ready to 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 introduce a brand new system absolutely and i'll tell you why um everybody already knows um everybody already knows what sony can deliver going to going to e3 and dropping information on the next playstation isn't going to matter because They've already dropped all. They've already dropped the majority of the information that you need to know. Anything that they're going to want to drop from here on out, they'll just do during state of play. And so, to be honest, I mean, E3 doesn't really doesn't really guarantee them anything. True, but like, don't you think? Like, to me, I would imagine they want that because we still technically haven't seen the final uh, form of what the PS5 right. is going to look like. Uh, we don't know a price yet, obviously, and or right. the exact drop date. So. You know, usually, you know, like that reveal, like when they take the, you know, the, 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 the towel, whatever the hell you call mm-hmm. it, the, the cover off the system and, oh, ooh, ah, yeah. and flashes go, you know, oh, and Kong breaks through and eats people. Yes. But, um, you know, d- don't you like that? I feel is like part of it where if you just see on a state of play, you know, coming up now, the PlayStation 5. Yes. Viola. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, does it have the same pizzazz? Uh, it may not have the same pizzazz in the sense of they're not doing a big reveal at an expo, but again, I think that, I think that Sony, Sony specifically, I think that Sony is far ahead of the competition and like they're far enough ahead of the Mm -hmm. other competition where I don't think they need that type of impact anymore. We all know what we're going to get from Sony. It doesn't matter how they announce it. It's such a, it's such a, um, trusted product at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that it's really Microsoft and Nintendo to a lesser extent because Nintendo, we've always said they're kind of the outlier because they have their core audience and they just stick with that. Basically, um, but it's going to be more Microsoft to me, where like they they really need that because they're trying to get in on some of Sony's market. Okay, that's well, just and that's just my opinion. Uh, that's what we're looking for. Uh, you know, certainly time will tell on all of this. Yeah. And uh, as E3 approaches, I mean, that's in yes. June, so we got some time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but right now, I think this was a good one. I think it's probably, we'll bring this one into port, unless you got anything else to, to chat I, about. I do, Larry. I do. Oh, there you go. I'm saying this is why we need a... Yeah, I know. Right. Well, did, did, did you see the reveal on Super Nintendo World that went on last week? The theme park attractions? Oh, oh, yes. I completely forgot about that. How could you forget about that? Because I don't live in Japan. Well, neither do I, and yet I still know. <laughs> I feel like you may secretly have something to do with it. <laughs> I um, no, it, it it looks very very cool. Um, aren't they building one here in the U.S. though? Uh, they're well? building two in the U.S. here. There's one in Orlando and one in Hollywood. There we go. So, but this one in Japan and some of the stuff, um, you know, it just looks. It is very Nintendo all the way down. As we posted on the Facebook page, the hey, let's decline that. If you hear that, folks, I apologize. I'm getting a phone call. Um, all the way down to the piranha plant urinals. <laughs> yeah, the, I, I gotta say the piranha plant urinals are definitely unique. Um, but what? But but the big uh, one of the bigger reveals was um, uh, when they were talking about how you're gonna have uh, kind of a um, a wristband. Yes. And the wristband is gonna open interactivity around Super Nintendo World, where the entire world is like a video game to you so like you can see a coin block above your head and punch it to get coins <laughs> and collect coins 
um, and just other things that you get to interact with through the power, you know, in that wristband. Um, so they revealed that. And then, of course, uh, there was other uh, further information that came out about the, um, the one of the rides as well. Which oh, that is, one I think I forgot. Uh, which is the Mario Kart ride. Yes. You know, the, the, this thing, it, it's crazy the time we live in right now. Yeah. Who would really have known? Is. Who would have thunk it? No, 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 nobody would have that we would get, you know, of all the, of all the things to get licensed out to theme parks, I never expected Nintendo to do it. Um, yeah, right. Especially or, as they, or, they were so protective. Yeah, yeah. Or if they were going to do it, I always expected that they would build their own, you know, mm-hmm. not like they've officially licensed it to Universal, Universal Studios. Um, so it's just an exciting, it really is like, it's an exciting time to be a gamer, retro or current. Mm-hmm. Uh, because we're just getting, you know, uh, we're just getting so much. We're getting so much content. Uh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Crazy input, like yes. Johnny Five would say. Exactly. I'm so. ready to. Uh, I'm ready to accept my. Uh, uh, what you call it? I'm ready to accept the uh, the thing from the, the Matrix old. where they just, oh. where they just lo- upload you. Johnny Mnemonic. Yeah, just sticking in the back of my head. Although I did. I, I, this isn't video game related, but I did see uh, new tech come out. Um, contact lenses with built-in AR. That's weird. Contact lenses with uh, augmented reality. So you actually will be able to just wear contact lenses and actually, yeah, and actually like, interact with AR. Like Google Google glasses. Say that three times fast. Yeah, kind of like that. Uh, it's just all this weird. Just, there's so much happening so fast. Um, and I just want to play Beat Saber. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get that started for crying out loud. I like, think I think I think it's time for us to discuss Beat Saber battles on live stream. What? <laughs> we got to because I got to well I got to get the dang thing going and uh yes. you know make sure I don't have a heart attack while playing it so well we can live stream that too. <laughs> Whatever gets the numbers, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> so where could you possibly see me having a heart attack live on the internet? Well, ideally, you can see it on Facebook.com <laughs> slash Retro Gamers Podcast, um, or we can, or you can, or we can post it up on our Instagram page at Retro Gamers Podcast. We can tweet it if you want at uh, is it at Retro Gamers Retro Pod? Retro Gamers Pod, yeah, Retro, Retro Gamers, Gamers Pod. Pod. We can tweet it, um, or you know, quite simply, we will post it in memoriam on the Retro Gamers.com. <laughs> oh my God! How dare you, sir? Accurate, but how dare you? <laughs> Um, and of course you can find us wherever you are listening to podcasts or watching us right now on YouTube. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit that bell icon. So, you know, when new videos will pop up and, um, and Larry, I want to close out really quickly because we completely, I completely forgot about them. Uh, I bought a few games while I was in Las Vegas at a gamer's paradise. So before before we say farewell, really quickly, um, surprisingly, I did not have this before. Um, so I picked this up, uh, Excite Bike. Wow, you didn't have that? No, I didn't have Excite Bike with the Ooh, with the instruction booklet. Which very is nice. nice. Yeah. Uh, clean with what is even more surprising, or, or well, before I'll save that one for later. Um, this one I bought because a couple of weeks ago we we talked about television show games, right? Oh, <laughs> yeah. So they had a uh, Gilligan's Island there. So oh, Island. fantastic! And, good and, uh, and copy. The, yeah, it's a really good copy. Um, so I picked that up. And this is the one that surprised me the most that I, I, I did not realize I didn't have this. And it shocked me to my core. But Castlevania II Simon's Quest. Oh, burn so, it. I had to buy that. And last but they also had the uh, they had the uh, retranslated version as well. Oh, the quicker um, but, one? Nice. Yeah, but I didn't pick that up. And then for the <laughs> Xbox, not 360, but the original Xbox, oh, I picked up a game that I was obsessed with on my PC. But now I get to play it on my Xbox, which is really awesome, and that is Roller Coaster Tycoon. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh, yeah, you were obsessed about that. Game. I was, and it has the instruction yeah. booklet, too. Really, really and nice there's copy. your receipt. And there's my receipt, which I keep in all of my – yeah, when I shop, <laughs> they go right in the box. <laughs> Next time I'm in LA, I'm taking all the receipts out. Uh, and, and, and then you'll watch Larry die on live stream. <laughs> awesome. Very good pickups, though. Those are really nice. And they're yes. all clean copies as, as well. So very good stuff. Very important to me. And nice. okay. And now we're done. Okay. So again, YouTube, hit the bell icon so you know when we get new videos. Uh, hit the subscribe button and then like, share everything that we post, especially the podcast. And uh, with that, Ant, have a wonderful week. You have a wonderful week as well. 
Awesome. And we will catch you right here next week on the Retro Gamers Podcast.